Hey guys, uh, my name is Galina. In this video today, we are going to be going through uh, some questions that uh, beginner uh, lash artists have. Um, I know a lot of these questions will be like, duh, like obviously, like, but the thing is, you guys have to keep in mind that, you know, a lot of um, the, the people that are watching the video don't know where they just began, they just started. So, uh, you know, just think back to when you were a beginner and a lot of these questions weren't like common sense. So um, just let's try to keep that in mind. <clears throat> And just um, also, I would strongly encourage you guys to leave comments in the comment section if you have a different uh, take on it. So I'm going to be answering those questions. But if you have another take on it or if you um, uh, have had a different experience or have something else to share, please do so in the comments because I'm sure that's going to help a lot of our lash artists. And that's what we try to encourage on our channel as well as our Instagram is that we try to encourage um, other lash artists to help each other. Um, because it's a really tough industry to be in and it's really hard to like get the support that you need. So that's why it's really, really great to see everyone coming together and like not being like, oh, like I know everything and like, screw you, figure it out. Um, rather like being like, kind of like, okay, I'm going to help you out. And, um, here's what happened to me and giving your intake and your your input on it. Uh, we also have a Facebook group where you guys can uh, post your questions and we have a lot of helpful lash artists there that as well as uh, we try to help in that group as well. We try to answer your questions in that group as well. So if you uh, if your question, if your particular question wasn't answered, um, I would strongly encourage you guys to go to that Facebook group and uh, post your question there and hopefully uh, you get the answers that you need. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first question that we have today is, um, hi, how are you? Uh, I'm a newbie in this industry. Um, so I have a question. I don't have a place or a salon for my friends. Um, I don't have a place or a salon for my business. I just go to my friend's place or my client's place. I'm just wondering, do I need to get a permit for my small business so I can file it for tax refund? I really appreciate you and been following you. Hope you can help me. Thank you in advance. Okay, so first of all, um, I'm not gonna post um, the handle of the Instagram of the person that wrote this just because I, you know we, we like to um, keep the um, on an anonymity. So making sure that like the comments are anonymous but um because they may not the, the lash artist may not want everyone to know but anyway let's get into it so um first of all if you're in the u.s most u.s states do require you to have an esthetician license at the very least or even the cosmetology license in order to do eyelash extensions there's a, a lot of confusion as to exactly um you know which state and what you need but as a general rule of thumb i would strongly encourage you guys to check with your uh, state and with your board. And I would say that most states, you do need to have an esthetician license. Um, but aesthetic school, um, basically in the US, the way it works is that like you go through aesthetic school, you do all this, um, a lot of different things about skincare, you learn a lot about facials, but you don't necessarily learn about lashes. You do, there's like a one to two day class depending on each program but it's not sufficient in order for you to become like an expert at it. So what is strongly encouraged is for you to either learn on your own, take a bunch of classes, um, listen to a lot of uh, YouTube channels, um, but the most important thing is get certified. So, um, so certification and a license to be a esthetician or a cosmetologist is required in most states. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, there's a lot of different rules depending on each state. Like you can't really go to people's houses and do um, their lashes because you know, there's liability insurance in case anything happens, you need to be insured, you need to. Um, and regarding the tax return, so that's a whole other question. So that you need to speak with your accountant. Um, Normally, like you obviously have to file your taxes, you have to have a business uh, um, license. The best is like an LLC usually because then um, you're it's like a limited liability uh, 
corporation. So then, you know, like, let's say, um, so you get protection against getting sued. Um, so this are talking about the U.S. because we're in the U.S. But in Canada, it's a whole other story. In um, in um, uh, other countries, it's a it's a different uh, story, which I don't necessarily know. I know that in Canada, um, you don't necessarily need to be an esthetician in order to do eyelash extension. So anyone can do it. Um, it's not regulated the way it is in the U.S. So hopefully that answers your question. So we're going to, um, if you guys have anything else to add that I haven't covered and you think is important, please link it down in the comments below. I'm sure that it's going to help this lash, art tr uh, lash artist tremendously. Um, so yes, so there we go. So question number two, I have a question. When I do my client's lashes and they open their eyes, they're always so red and taking a picture is very hard when they look blood red shot, shot red like that. Do you have any suggestions? Am I doing something wrong? Also, they say the Yegi Lash Primer burns. Could that be the culprit? Should I wash it off? Which I have, but then there goes the whole purpose of priming the lashes. Please help. Okay, so um, so this is once again a very uh, big question and there's a lot of sides to it. So we're just going to tackle it uh, one by one. So the red eyes, I would strongly encourage that you make sure that your client's eyes are properly closed throughout the entire um, procedure. Because even um, if you don't apply the patches properly and, the, and there's a little bit of, um, you know, like, or if the client is talking. If, so the first culprit could be that you haven't applied the patches properly. And uh, there's a little bit of a gap, even like a one to two millimeter gap. So then what ends up happening is that um, the fumes from the adhesive, which is the most common uh, reason for the red eyes, the fumes are going to be going in. And within two hours, obviously, there's a lot of fumes. The eyes are going to be bloodshot, irritated. Um, and that's going to take a couple of days to resolve. But, you know, it's not the best for taking pictures. And obviously, the client isn't comfortable. Um, so that's one thing that is really um, could be the culprit. Then the other reason could be that the client is talking the entire time. And once again, um, the patches are moving, the eyes are opening slightly and you're getting fumes into the eyes. And this is what happens. So um, that's another reason. Uh, the other could be a, simply an allergic reaction um, to the fumes, but that's another story. Um, clients that get this uh, problem usually are no longer able to wear eyelash extensions, unfortunately. Um, so, so that's really, really uncomfortable. Um, but then, um, you know, the, the best trick that I can give you guys is to just make sure that your patches are properly put on, put on. Make sure you secure them with tape really, really, really well. Um, otherwise, this is what happens. It's called a chemical burn. So um, the reaction, the, the, the symptoms is pain, redness, irritation, tearing, um, inability to keep the eye open, um, swelling, and blurred vision. So you definitely want to avoid the chemical burn. Uh, the adhesives that we're using are very strong as lash artists. So the eyes need to be really properly closed and educate your clients. Tell them. Tell them about um, uh, what could happen, the chemical burn. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, uh, clients that are also, are also educating themselves and listening to these videos. So um, ensure that that doesn't happen. Now, the other issue could be too much pressure on the tweezer. So a lot of the times new lash artists feel really stressed and they're um, isolating. When they're isolating, they are putting a lot of pressure on the tweezer and they are pushing too hard. Um, and then what happens is that the lower eyelid is pushed down and it exposes the eye, the cornea to the fumes. So make sure that you practice holding uh, the tweezer down, um, but very, very lightly. Don't, don't push it down too much because that's, you're going to, you can end up causing chemical burn. Now, uh, the other reason for this could be, um, 
that uh, the, the adhesive is expired or not shaken well. Um, so sometimes we have noticed that the fumes can be stronger if it's not shaken well. It needs to be shaken really well each time. Otherwise, the fumes will be more severe. Um, so, and then the other thing is you have to refresh your adhesive once a month, ideally, because that will um, ensure that you, um, that your adhesive is always really fresh. Um, and then the other last thing that could be causing the red eyes is uh, when the client has really uh, round red eyes. Uh, what am I saying? Round red eyes. Round large round eyes so when they have la large round eyes it's not a bad thing but for eyelash extensions sometimes they don't close all the way and so once again the fumes are getting in causing the redness um so what you can do is you, you for those clients you can double up on the pads you can you can ensure that it's taped really well on the bottom make sure that you're applying that breathable tape all the way on the bottom and uh, you're sealing all the gaps to protect the client from the fumes that could be getting in. So that would be key. Okay, so those were, were, uh, those were, um, were the potential issues. Um, by the way, I want you guys to meet my cat. This is Richard. He is my absolute love. He's my new uh, newborn, firstborn uh, love. He's seven years old, um, and I'm absolutely obsessed with him. So he likes to... Um, he likes to always be wherever I am and like hang out with me. So um, he's he's just listening to this uh, to this video actually as we speak right now. So um, so what could you do? Um, so basically, you just need to tell the client to um, apply some drops from the pharmacy. You can tell them to take Benadryl, and um, the treatment really is going to be. Um, not doing all the, the things that we just spoke about, um, making sure that you um, you fix the cause and then they're not going to have that issue anymore. But, but really, um, the redness should resolve on its own within a couple of like 24 to 48 hours, but that's about it. There's nothing else you can really do um, and just tell the client to put Visine for the redness tell them to rest their eyes um, and then to um, it should resolve on its own um, and take Benadryl. But that's about it. Uh, that's all you can really do and just uh, fix the cause and, you know, eliminate the cause of what why this is happening. So I think we're going to stop here for the Q&A. But I'm going to do the second part of the Q&A. Be sure to watch that. Um, I'm going to link it down as well for you guys. Um, also, we have a lot of online courses that we've been coming up with, um, coming out with. Uh, the mapping course is only $99. So be sure to check that one out. I'm going to link it down in the description below. Um, and then if you guys need to shop supplies, the description is there as well. If you guys haven't subscribed, be sure to do so because we're going to be coming out with new videos for you guys uh, once, twice a week, actually, on Wednesdays and Fridays. So I'm going to have part two for this right now for you guys.